Hello friends, welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we'll be seeing the current affairs of 28 December 2018. The articles we'll be seeing today are these six. First one is about the recent passage of Triple Talaq Bill in the Parliament. Second article talks about the river dolphins in Sundarbans. Third article is about the extension of deadline for National Registry of Citizens in Assam. The year-end review of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. The fifth one is again the year-end review of Ministry of Heavy Industries. And the final article talks about the recent second delta ranking of aspirational districts by Niti Aayog. The first article we'll be seeing is Triple Talaq Bill Passed. This article was taken from the paper Hindu. The Lok Sabha passed the Muslim Women Protection Rights on Marriage Bill 2018, which is also called as Triple Talaq Bill recently. This bill will now replace the ordinance which is already in force. So in this context, one have to know what Triple Talaq is. Okay, under this triple talaq, if a Muslim man wants to divorce his wife, then he can just pronounce uh, the word talaq thrice over a period of three months, then the marriage is considered to be dissolved. This talaq can be pronounced either in oral, written or more recently the recent forms that is electronic media. This practice of triple talaq has been established as per the procedures given in Quran. However, in few parts of South Asia, a form of talaq called as talaq e bidat is practiced. So, under this form, a talaq is pronounced thrice in single sitting by a Muslim man. So, this procedure of talaq e bidat is not in accordance with the provisions as in Quran. Uh, even the Supreme Court, in its August 2017 judgment, has pronounced this procedure of talaq e bidat as unconstitutional as it goes against the principles enshrined in Quran. The Supreme Court even asked the central government to frame a separate law in order to monitor the procedure and the practice of triple talaq, for which currently the triple talaq bill has been permulated in the parliament. Let's now see the provisions of the bill. So, this bill, it aims to make the practice of triple talaq a penal offence. Uh, this bill makes the in pronunciation of instant triple talaq illegal as well as void and proposes a jail term of three years for the husband. This bill covers all forms of utterance of triple talaq including the written or the electronic form. So this uh, triple talaq has also been made as a cognizable offence. So under this, the cognizance of offence can be taken only when the complaint is filed to the magistrate by the wife or any other close relative. Provisions has also been provided for peaceful negotiation so that the couple uh, come on to a compromise. There is also a provision for bail which can be granted only by the magistrate after hearing from the wife. So we all know that the institution of marriage is a civil contract. However, this bill makes the provision of triple talaq a criminal offence by making it cognizable. So this goes directly against the principles of natural justice. So according to the government, this provision will ensure the larger constitutional goals of gender justice as well as equality which is enshrined the part of fundamental rights in our constitution which will lead to empowerment of the Muslim women community in our country. The next article we'll be seeing is River Dolphins Go Missing in Sundarbans. This article was also taken from the paper Hindu. This Ganges River Dolphin is national aquatic animal of our country and it is also known by the name Susu. This dolphin occupies Ganga, Brahmaputra, and Meghna river system as its major habitat and the four major states in India where its uh, range exists include Assam, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and West Bengal and this uh, river dolphin is classified as endangered by IUCN. So the news here is that the increasing salinity in the water system in Ganga near Sundarbans has resulted in decrease in population of this Gangetic river dolphin. So apart from the increase in salinity which is a threat to the survival of the dolphins, other reasons include climate change, increasing human interventions which results in fragmentation of the habitat of the river dolphins as well as uh, increase in sea level as a result of climate change is also posing threat to the survival of this 
dolphin community. Other anthropogenic reasons for decrease in their population include creating more dam barrages and even indiscriminate fishing of the dolphins in the Gangetic area. And another important point about Gangetic river dolphin is the survival of Gangetic river dolphins in an area indicates the cleanliness of the water system. So, dwindling population of the Gangetic river dolphins directly indicates the increasing levels of pollution in the water bodies in our country. The next article we'll be seeing is Center extends deadline to update National Registry of Citizens. This article was also taken from the paper Hindu. The center has given extension of six months to complete the ongoing exercise of National Registry of Citizens in the state of Assam. So now the period has been extended till June 30, 2019. So here we have to know what NRC is. So the National Registry of Citizens uh, was to be prepared after every census which is conducted once in 10 years. This registry was first prepared in the year 1951 only by the state of Assam until now only the state of Assam has the national registry of citizens in whole of India. However, the early 20th century saw increased the inflow of migrants from the states of Bangladesh and Myanmar into northeastern India. So this affected the demographics of the northeastern part of the country. This uh, in turn caused identity crisis among the locals which resulted in increased regionalistic sentiments among them. So this resulted in revival of this National Registry of Citizens for the state of Assam and the first draft uh, of the National Registry of Citizens has been published recently. However, this act uh, faced severe criticisms as about 40 lakh people were excluded from the National Registry of Citizens in order to rectify the exclusion errors in the released draft. The next article we'll be seeing is Year End Review, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. This was taken from PIB. So globally, there is increasing awareness about the climate change. So India has taken leadership position in efforts to both mitigate and adapt to the climate change process and its efforts has been duly recognized as it has by United Nations Environment Program as it was conferred as global host for the Environment Day which is celebrated in 5th June every year. So the focus on this Environment Day was about the plastic pollution. And apart from this, the United Nations has also recognized the leadership position of India by conferring the Champions of Earth Award to the Prime Minister of our country. Various other steps taken by India with respect to climate change include Green Good Deeds Campaign, which is basically a social movement of Environment Ministry to protect the environment, thereby promoting good living in our country. The second one is Green Skill Development Program, which will train the youths of our country in the sectors of environment, forest as well as wildlife, thereby creating a source of employment, thus harnessing the demographic dividend in our country. The government has also bought in an amendment to Indian Forest Act 1927 by removing bamboo from the category of tree. This apart from promoting bamboo cultivation and the source of income for the people involved in bamboo cultivation, it will also help in mitigating the effects of climate change. This is because bamboo is a very important natural source of carbon sequestration. So in this direction, uh, Conference of Parties 24 of uh, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change was conducted in Poland in a place called as Katowice and uh, this successfully launched the rule book for adapting the 2015 Paris Agreement. Uh, in this COP24, India did play a very important role for the developing countries and acting in accordance with the Talanova Dialogue principles. The National Adaptation Fund on Climate Change under United Nations also provided aid, did provide aid for the adaptation activities in India. And United Nations Environment Program also uh, recognized the excellent work done by India in combating transboundary environmental crime by the Wildlife Crime Control Bureau of India by awarding it with Asian Environment Enforcement Award in the year 2018. The next article we'll be seeing is Year End Review 2018 of Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises. First ever Global Mobility Summit MOVE was conducted in the year 2018. 
and the focus of the summit was to increase the awareness about the various aspects of mobility and bringing in the various stakeholders in the field of mobility via a single platform. So this first of its kind mobility summit had a team to promote seven C's common, connected, convenient, congestion free, charged as well as clean cutting edge technology to all stakeholders involved in the area of mobility. One other step taken in this area is the government along with other stakeholders in the automotive industry articulated the objectives of this heavy vehicles industry in accordance with the automotive mission plan 2016-2026. This plan aims to make India a great world leader in the field of engineering, manufacturing as well as export of vehicles and other auto components part by the year 2026. The government has even come up with a new scheme called as FAME, Faster Adoption and Manufacturing of Hybrid and Electric Vehicles. This scheme will curb the vehicular pollution which is released due to the usage of fossil fuels. The government has even come up with other regulatory measures to curb vehicular pollution such as early introduction of Bharat Stage 6 by 2020 on par with the European norms. The government also plans to increase the efficiency of the passenger vehicles by the year 2022 by at least 18%. This is based on the target set in by the corporate average fuel efficiency system of Government of India. The government has also set up first ever world class centre called as International Centre for Automotive Technology in our country. This will promote the uh, research and development as well as automotive testing in this field. This NATRIP that is National Automotive Testing and Research and Development Infrastructure Project is in collaboration with the government of India with the state government as well as the Indian automotive industry. So, by using all the stakeholders, this aims to create a state of art testing, validation as well as R&D infrastructure in the country. The final article for the day is, Niti Ayog releases second delta rating for aspirational districts. This was taken from PIB. This uh, aspirational district program, it aims in transforming the socio-economic status of 117 aspirational districts from all 28 states of our country. So, it is based on three broad principles, creating convergence, increasing collaborations as well as promoting competition among the districts by mass movement which is called as Jan Andolan. So, this uh, scheme is based on five major teams. The teams include uh, health and nutrition, education, agriculture and water resources, increasing financial inclusion, skill development as well as increasing basic infrastructure in the aspirational districts. So, this scheme it aims to increase the strength of all these districts and prioritizes the attainable outcome for showcasting immediate improvement. In this district of Vidhanagar in Tamil Nadu occupy the first ranking. The districts which perform well in this delta ranking are considered as model districts.